following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Money. We're also streaming on the web. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern. We're also streaming on the web or downloading uh, recorded copies on the web at our website, dlblaine.com. It's not a live stream, but you can look at archive copies, either uh, the video or the audio, if you want to download it to your MP3 player or iPod. Head on over there, dlblaine.com. We'll post the copies in a, in a week or so. Uh, we also like to hear from you at comments, questions, topics you'd like to see from the show. So we'll go through quickly how to contact us. The phone number, 252-633-0107. Our email is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And, of course, you can go direct to the website, dlblaine.com, and click the big Contact Us button. Well, today I've got a good show lined up for you. It's kind of an eclectic mix of topics um, a lot going on in the world with um, uh, the IRS. Uh, I don't know if you heard this or not, but the IRS being scrutinized and um, over-examining certain uh, groups of people and uh, Benghazi and all kinds of crazy things going on in the political uh, spectrum. And the financial world, um, there's a, likewise a lot of speculation going on. The markets are heading upwards. It seems uh, people getting nervous about you know, if they're going to come crashing down and, you know, what's going on with the, the dollar and the yen, all the developed economies depreciating their, their currencies. Uh, a lot of those things, the answer is unknowable. And so we're not going to spend a lot of time on that today. I wanted to put together a few practical tips for you in this time of uncertainty, maybe some things in your planning that you're doing that you could tweak a little bit better, some things we do in our firm uh, that are maybe a little bit different from other firms, and, and we'll talk about that. Number one is there's a lot of discussion about uh, Roth conversion, Roth IRA. Okay, so you have traditional IRAs like a 401k. When you put money into it, you get a tax deduction, and then when you pull it out, you have to pay the income tax. Of course, you can't pull it out before age 59 and a half without a penalty, but after 59 and a half, you can start taking it out. And at age 70 and a half, the government requires that you take a certain amount out of your IRA. So for purpose of this discussion, we're going to assume if you had a 401k while you're working that you roll that over to your own IRA. You see, I'm nodding my head. Yes, you want to do that. Do not, our advice is do not ever leave uh, your 401k with a former employer. Number one is the employer doesn't really have anything to do with the 401k, more than likely, if it's a large company, they've outsourced it to, you know, Fidelity or Prudential or, or someone. Um, there's just no reason to leave it there at all. Roll it over to your own IRA. So for the purpose of this, we're talking about either a 401k that you rolled over to an IRA or an IRA that you put, you know, the, the annual contribution in. Contrast that with a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA certain people up to a certain income limit are allowed to contribute to every year. Now, they don't get a tax deduction, but the current rules state that when they take the money out after age 59 and a half, there's no tax on it. And so when um, a lot of it, you're allowed to convert from a regular IRA to a Roth. And so a lot of people think, well, if income tax rates go up a lot in the future, you know, I don't want to be taking that IRA money out and have to pay tax on it, and that's a legitimate argument. Um, but there's more to it than sort of meets the eye that traditionally people look at, well, I think if tax rates are going to be higher, let me do the conversion. Well, it's not quite such an easy um, uh, calculation. Um, in the future, also Roth IRA income, it doesn't count as income. 
So in the future, your income will be lower, which presumably maybe you're drawing Social Security or there's a new 3.8% um, you know, investment income tax. There's a whole host of taxes that when you pull money out of a Roth, it doesn't increase your AGI. Whereas if you have a big IRA, say you have a um, you know, million dollars or so in an IRA, when you start taking that money out the first year, your, your income is going to drastically be higher and cause certain, uh, you know, Social Security to be taxed at a higher level maybe and some other things. So a lot of people say, well, go ahead and do the Roth conversion. We like Roth conversions for the right circumstances. What I want to do is put something, another seed in your mind, and this is something that can be used not just for this, but while you're in a lower tax bracket, say you're working and you're still in the, you know, if you're still in the 15% tax bracket, which married filing jointly, I don't have the table in front of me, but it, I, I think it goes up to somewhere around seventy, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000. What we like people to do is what we call fill that bucket up. And so if you're over 59 and a half and you're in the 10 or 15% tax bracket, go ahead and start taking that IRA money out up until the, the marginal amount starts hitting the top of that 15% tax bracket. Remember, you're not paying a full 15%. That's your marginal rate. You're probably paying somewhere in the, you know, 8, 9, 10% range. And what that does, if you look at that over a number of years until you're required to start taking the money out at age 70, you'll see that by removing that money early on and having it taxed at, at the lower, you know, 15% bracket, that your number one, your required minimum distribution at age 70 is going to be much lower. And number two, you may not be in such a high bra tax bracket as you thought. We also like using this strategy um, for other things, you know, taking capital gains. When you're in those lower tax brackets, take advantage of them and use them uh, to the fullest extent. And what I mean by that is if you're just barely in the 15% tax bracket, every additional dollar that you put in that bracket, you're not going to be taxed at a higher rate. And so go ahead and use up um, that, that benefit. Uh, I know it's a little hard to explain, you know, on the TV and radio. If you have any questions on that, get in contact with us. But it's a great strategy that we like to use. And we call it filling up the tax bracket is to take extra income and utilize that tax bracket to the fullest extent so that in future years you don't, uh, unintentionally get bumped up, bumped up to a next tax bracket. Related to that, um, we look at uh, estimating tax rates in the future. And when people do their tax planning, traditional tax planning is done at what's called the marginal rate. And that is the, the rate at which each additional dollar is taxed. And that's what I just talked about is the 15% bracket, your marginal rate. There's also what's called an effective rate. And when you're doing tax planning, uh, you know, a lot of people will use margin rate, but sometimes the effective rate is a better solution. Well, we're reaching our first break here. When we come back, we'll continue talking about this topic and delve into a little bit more detail on what the effective tax rate is.